Hello, this is Andrew Nielsen. I'm Director of Campaigns at the Howard League for Penal Reform, and I'm very pleased to have been asked to address these questions about the future of probation for NAPO. Looking at the reunification of probation, which is something the Howard League has very much campaigned for, um, I can still see real challenges ahead. The Howard League remains concerned that the unified model will be delivered through HMPPS and the National Probation Service. We don't think the regional model is sufficiently local or responsive, and it doesn't give probation the independence it needs from Whitehall bureaucracy. We would much rather have seen something more like the old probation trusts, uh, with proper local accountability and visibility. We're also very worried about government commitments elsewhere on recruiting police officers uh, and reintroducing police performance management, uh, which we think will result in an increasing workload for probation at the very point when changes are just bedding in. But there's no doubt the new unified model uh, is a big step on from what was being proposed and a massive leap forward from the disaster which was transforming rehabilitation. If I'm looking at opportunities in what's being proposed, then it definitely feels that the probation workforce programme is an opportunity to give probation as a profession some much needed love. And that's not just about training and development, although those things are very important. Um, I say it simply as love because I think for many years, many probation practitioners have felt reduced. They've felt reduced by politicians, uh, by policymakers, by media backlashes when cases have gone wrong. Probation shouldn't be the scapegoat of criminal justice. At the very least, it is the pack horse of criminal justice because it does a hell of a lot of necessary heavy lifting in the system. But why can't probation be treated as the thoroughbred of criminal justice? Now, I don't think that the workforce programme uh, will deliver that, but it is at least a start in starting to show some real ambition about what could be achieved. From the Howard League's point of view, the single thing that we want to see achieved from what comes next is a political shift. Um, in thinking post-pandemic. Not only can't we go back to the overcrowded and violent prisons that we had pre-COVID, but we can't go back to the invisible overcrowding that we had in the probation system. Um, there are, you know, we can't go back to staff um, struggling with unmanageable caseloads. Now, there are practical steps that can be taken to help uh, deal with that. And of course, funding is always helpful. Um, but I don't think that um, those things alone are enough. You know, the government needs to be thinking in a really hard-headed way about managing demand. At the moment, we have a massive policing and sentencing bill going through Parliament, uh, all of which is designed to put more people into prison um, and, and the system as a whole um, and for longer. And that sort of maximalist inflationary approach uh, is just not tenable. Um, and so what we really want to see is some new thinking. Um, from government and from those who engage with government about how we pick the pieces of society together again after the pandemic.